This is my long wave receive antenna. It's a loop antenna. I can receive from around 150 to 185 kilohertz in the low setting. And then in the high setting, I can go on up to maybe two, maybe 220 kilohertz. Haven't used it in about eight months. It was sitting outside. You see it looks pretty weathered. And at some point, a storm came and blew it over and neglected to pick it up. And when I finally did, water dripped out of it. So I haven't looked at it yet, but I was about to pull the cover off and I figured I'd video. On the bottom of the box, we have a pot, probably a 10K pot. Allows me to tune in the frequency. I have a switch to go from low range to high range and then my cable output that goes to my receiver. Alright, so it looks like there's no water damage. Maybe the water just came from around the edge. I didn't put the gasket on it at some point when I was changing the battery. So I guess I need to make sure it's standing up when it rains. But um, So if you look inside, I've got four, I think the NT618s or something like that. They're tuning diodes. I give it um, zero to nine volts and um, it allows me to tune with voltage instead of having a tuning cap. The main reason I did that is because I'm going to make this external uh, remotely tunable at some point. Um, probably pretty soon, hopefully this winter. And then past that I have just a, I didn't come up with the um, preamp. I found it on the internet. If you go to my website, jwhamer.me, um, I have a small article on this build and um, it has links to where I got the uh, design from. It's it's a combination of two different designs. The tuning diodes uh, circuit came from, um, well that's a pretty standard circuit, but it came from a guy who was making a down converter. So you could listen to long wave radio using sound card and um, then the preamp was a was a unbalanced preamp loop antenna circuit. So it's a JFET and then it goes to a PMP transistor for the second stage. So coming out of there, um, I use 75 ohm TV cable to go to my receiver. So I have an um, impedance matching transformer. It's also an isolation transformer. Since this is unbalanced, I um, at least didn't want this to act as an antenna with reference to ground. So it's isolated from ground. Um, I don't remember the ratio, it might be something like 4 to 1, but I did some experimentation after I designed this preamp and figured out the input impedance of it, or the output impedance of it. So, it's pretty well tuned. It helped a lot once I took care of that. I originally had this going directly to the um, cable and I had a lot of issues with imaging. I, and I think, um, and it wasn't the you know, this is a directional antenna. It seemed to pick up a lot of things from where it should have been nulls. So I think that was just it acting like a monopole antenna with reference to ground from the cable. So anyway, that helped a lot. Um, you can see this is broken. I believe that happened last winter, and I just kept sticking it in the um, connector when I plug it in the new battery. So I'll put a new one of these on here and try it out. Hopefully everything will be good. I did build this PC board using toner transfer method, so it turned out pretty good. I didn't put silk screen on this one, but um, I was pretty happy with those results. I did find that um, my calculations for the tuning diodes is usually way off. I expect it to be off since they're really, you know, small capacitive, small capacitive circuit, and I have pretty fat traces and a ground plane. But it always seems to be a lot more often than I would expect. So I usually have to compensate for that somewhere with extra capacitance. So here's the um, the high range, low range switch. You can see I just add a little more capacitance to the loop antenna when it's in that mode. And the other one, there's no capacitor because it's using the tuning circuit itself as the capacitance. I think I am going to at least attempt to get a look at the back of this board before I put it all back together. Just because I did see some water come out of it, I believe. 
I'm going to disconnect my isolation transformer or impedance matching transformer um, just so I don't break the leads but the other ones I'm going to try to leave on there there is a little bit of rust on the screw heads or at least one of them which suggests maybe some water was in there I was really expecting this thing to be full of water There is a little something going on it. Maybe normal. You can, I don't know if you can see. Let's see if I can get you closer. There's some white stuff up here, and some stuff around here. I don't know if that's just normal copper oxidation or if that's actually from moisture being in there. But I guess we need to try to clean that off. Since there does appear to be some damage, I guess we'll actually take the board out, take the board the rest of the way out. So I can disconnect these two white wires, but the three wires to the pot are soldered. So I can either take the pot out or unsolder them. I think since I have to solder on two of them anyway, to, um, Maybe I can just clean it like that. Yeah, maybe that's fun. I don't really have anything here to clean it with, so I'm gonna just try some mineral spirits. And I got a paintbrush, so we'll start off with that and see what it does. If not, I'll go inside and see if I have a small wire brush. Alright, that actually cleaned it up pretty well. Hopefully Mineral Spirits isn't super conductive or corrosive or anything like that, but uh, it looks like it did the job, so I guess I'll put it back together. Okay, so hopefully this all works now. It's already dark outside, so I'm not going to go outside and try to set this up. But I'll make another video on that, and um, also go over my calibration procedure and, and what I use this for. So I guess I'll just put the cover on it and um, go charge up the battery. And then it'll be ready to test. <laughs> 